Hello fellow guitar geeks, in this box is the RG5121BCF from Ibanez. Firstly, it comes in this wonderfully protective hard case. That is a good case. Now I won't be surprised if you don't join me in being excited about a case, but it is good to know that the one it comes with is the last case you'll ever need. And if we open it up, I wonder if it's gonna be molded. Oh yes, a molded or shaped case. Oh, it's a fluffy. Look at that, it's got a tool. Ibanez multi-tool alert, I love these things. Maintenance manual, hopefully I won't be needing that. And let's take the guitar out. First feel, oh, that neck is super satiny. I'll just put it away and get rid of the case. So first impressions, that is a stunning looking guitar. Have a look at that. It's not black, it's not red, it's burgundy, BCF, burgundy metallic flat. I don't know where they got BCF from. Burgundy color flat? I don't know, but RG5121 is a really, really easy Ibanez name to remember. That doesn't happen often for me. In this video, I'm going to play through the pickup so we'll have some clean, some crunch, and some lead on all pickup settings, including this little toggly switch. I will open up the cavities to have a look at the build quality inside. That's always a good indication of how well built a guitar is. So to give it its full name, it's the RG5121 BCF Prestige. So it's one of the Prestige Ibanez's. I'll run through the specs quickly, but if you want more information, more detailed specifications, there are links to where you can get more info and how you can purchase in the video description. Let's do price first. It's coming in at 1,600 pounds or 1,800 euros or 1,800 dollars. Once again, check the links in the video description for up-to-date pricing. Let's talk woods. We've got a mahogany body, which is how many pieces? It looks like one. So we've got a one-piece mahogany body. The top is not actually a top. It's that flat paint job on top of the mahogany with binding, this cream binding which I think looks brilliant. It makes it look like it's got a top, it doesn't. The neck is a Super Wizard HP with five pieces of wood. Maple, Wenge, Maple, Wenge, Maple. Okay, so Wenge being the darker wood, and it's done like this apparently for strength reasons, not for cost cutting or anything like that. It's apparently a stronger construction with more pieces of wood glued together. Speaking of construction, we've got a volute just there to decrease the chances of you snapping the headstock off. Over to the front, we've got this gorgeously dark ebony fretboard, and that is black, or extremely dark brown. That's, that's a fretboard that maybe Gibson should be taking a look at and taking a page out of Ibanez's book. We've got 24 jumbo stainless steel frets, which has got the prestige fret end treatment. Hardware, we've got a fixed bridge. It's a Gibraltar Standard 2. And then uh, tuners, we've got Goto locking tuners with the, the thumb wheel. And one of the most obvious features of the guitar is the humbucking pickups. They're Fishman Fluence Modern, they're active, so we've got a battery uh, port just back there. And we've got a switch here for voice one and voice two. Master volume, master tone, one, two, three-way switch. So uh, switching like a Les Paul. So we've got bridge pickup, both in parallel, and then neck pickup. It's strung up with the Daria 10 to 46, so we've already got some good strings on there to start with. And looking at the back, We've got these two ferrules here, which are further back than the other four, meaning that you can uh, get some extra tension if you want to down tune it, drop tune it to drop D or something. What else can I tell you? Oh yeah, the fretboard radius is 17 inches, which is extremely flat, and the neck itself is not the thinnest neck I've ever played, but it is thin. It's, it's more wide. As, as I said, it's a sort of a flat D, it feels. <laughs> So for the cleans, I'll run through the Fender Deluxe Reverb through some vintage V30s, and I'll be using the Empress Effects Reverb for the reverb. I've got it on a plate reverb with about that much mix just for some ambiance.
Okay, so you might have noticed the neck pickup is a lot louder than the bridge pickup and the middle position. That is considerably louder. That's a really nice sounding neck pickup. Really enjoying that. So. Uh, some people have said that the Fishman fluents are sterile, but that's beautifully round and warm. It is pristine. It is clean, clean, clean. So it's it's modern. That's well, I guess that's the name of the pickup. It's a modern fluence. Um, it certainly is that, but it's wonderfully round. I was expecting something that wasn't so. Uh, round and full, but that is full. And then the bridge, a bit more crispy, not too clinical either. They're, they're both quite round. The guitar sounds quite dark, and I'm guessing that's because of the mahogany body. Who knows? Let's not get into tone wood today. But let's try the same pickups. Um, sorry, the same clean with voice two. So here's voice one. That's really dark. So this voice two seems to be darker than voice one. Let's just switch it again. Yeah, really, really dark on voice two, even more so. So there's more bass coming through when you switch it into voice two. That would be interesting for some high gain stuff. Let's do some crunch. For the crunch tones, I'll run through the Marshall SV20 into the same cab vintage V30s into your ears. Okay, I'm enjoying those those rocky tones. Let's do, go for the middle. That is not my favorite crunch tone I've heard from a guitar before, but it's certainly very, very different to anything I own. Um, it's not Les Paul, it's not Strat, it's something very, very modern. It's a modern sounding crunch. Um, if you like it or not, I don't know, but it surprised my ears. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's fair to say. So that was voice one. Let's go back to the bridge and switch between one and two. <laughs> Oh, hello, voice two seems to be more classic, more rounded, more vintagey sounding. <laughs> Voice one again. Okay, 
Okay, so voice one is definitely more modern. Voice two seems to be more classic. I don't know if that's intentional, but it certainly is the way. Let's try uh, all the voices in voice two now. Sorry, all the pickups on voice two. So bridge voice two. <laughs> I just did that noise that you have on Guitar Hero. Okay, now it's coming alive. This is not my forte musically, but... Let's go for bridge pickup, voice one, and then voice two, then middle position, voice one, then voice two, and then neck, voice one, and voice two. Middle position. <laughs> Let's go for neck position, voice one, then voice two. I've just realized I'm not playing hard enough. It needs more attack from the pick. Yes, it needs that aggression, it needs that attack, it needs that heavy strumming, that th really thrunking it to get the best out of these pickups, which I'm not the most experienced with Fishman Fluence pickups. This, this is definitely the best guitar I've played. I've played about three or four guitars with Fishman Fluence in them. This is my favorite so far with these pickups. Well, I don't know if the other ones were modern ones, but definitely with Fishman Fluence, this fits. So you're getting this, again, I'll say it again, crispiness from the bridge and this roundness from uh, the neck. Interestingly, the, the volume jump is there on the clean, but not there on the high gain, and, and it's still there on the crunch. So high gain, it's compressing it a little bit more, and it certainly rounds off the sound to make the guitar sound more balanced. Okay, let's crack it open, have a look inside, and see what makes the Ibanez RG5121BCF Prestige tick. Time to flex my drill skills. Let's go to the jack cavity first. Right, so what is inside here? Am I gonna have, oh, there we go. So it's shielded firstly, and we have one of these wonderful um, screwy type jack sockets. Can you see that? I know it's a bit out of focus just there, but let's have a look. It's not the best soldered jack I've ever seen in my life, honestly. Um, it works, certainly, and it's certainly sturdy. It ain't pretty. 
but the cavity itself is wonderfully routed and um yeah it it, it i don't think you have any issues with that at all uh, if you're wondering what this red and black is by the way that's running from the battery so we've got the power supply coming from the battery through this cavity here into there and that is as far away from the actual audio signal as it needs to be let's have a look uh, at the main cavity but if you're wondering what this is this is the plastic i haven't taken the plastic off so it's not broken or anything so i can use that there we go okay so we've got the is that the micro switch yeah this big thing here, that's the micro switch. So it's small on the outside and massive on the inside. That's taking out quite a lot of real estate. Then we've got um, the volume pot and tone pot, which are mini pots. They're alphas, so good quality. Then we've got a switch, which is, what does that say on there? Also alpha, so that's an alpha switch. Good quality stuff, should be from Ibanez. Wiring, there's a lot going on there. Um, but there is, of course, Fishman Fluence pickups. I've seen, I've seen worse. I've seen better. Overall, I'm going to score that somewhere, uh, uh, well, way above average, but not the best I've ever seen. Let's pop it back together. Let's also check the battery compartment. See what's going on in there. Okay. How do you get that out? Okay, that flips. Oh, that's interesting. I've never seen that before. So that that's a better quality jack, um, battery compartment than I'm used to. You flip that up and then you flip that forward like that and then the battery pulls out. Wonderful. Okay, it is worth to note that these are recessed so they'll be, be below the surface of the guitar. This is not, so that's above the surface of the guitar. That shouldn't get in your way though. There's those ferrules again and there's the screws screwing the neck to the body. So we haven't got a plate. We've got this wonderful access, uh, smooth, smooth prestige Ibanez um, butt. <laughs> Review time for the Ibanez RG5121BCF Prestige. It's going to set you back the best part of 2,000 euros and 2,000 dollars and over one and a half thousand pounds. So it should be absolutely phenomenal for an Ibanez. The guitar sounds very, very dark in the neck and very, very crispy and not bright, but certainly present in the bridge. So you've got these two very, very different worlds. And due to the pickups, I was expecting something a little less varied. I was expecting not so dark in the neck and not so crispy in the bridge. There's that word again, crispy. If you don't like modern pickups, you are not going to like this guitar. If you're looking for something modern sounding, this might be exactly what you need because I don't think it sits very well with classic rock tones. It sits beautifully with cleans, even though that neck pickup then sounds a little bit louder or a lot louder than the bridge. But with high gain, even though that's not my, uh, my bag, that's where this guitar really, really excels. Now the finish is, I think, absolutely beautiful. I'm getting into my more burl finishes, but I'm a flat finish guy most of the time. And I think everything about the way this guitar is designed from the looks is killer. I love the way the Cosmo black hardware just kind of pops on this burgundy finish and the wenge and maple neck is brilliant. We've got the prestige treated fret ends. We've got the Fishman Fluence pickups the Goto machine heads, the Gibraltar bridge. It's all good stuff and it should be for almost 2000 bucks. If the price puts you off, that's fair. It is not an entry level guitar. It is neither a mid range guitar. It is a real, real instrument that costs real, real money. There are several reasons I would not recommend this guitar though. Number one is that if you want something classic rock, this is not the first guitar that I would go for. It, in its current setup, it doesn't sound classic rock enough. It doesn't also look classic rock. So there's that. The second reason I would not recommend this guitar is if you're into fat necks. This is thin, it's flat, it's wide. I like it. Even though I do love fat necks, I still enjoy wizard style necks from Ibanez. I don't know why. I go from one extreme like a big baseball bat on my telly behind me. There it is. Uh, two things like the super wizard necks. It's just insane 
the difference between these two and they both appeal to me. However, if that's not for you, this guitar is not for you. As you're still watching the video, I'm gonna take a guess that those two reasons don't apply to you and therefore you might be thinking about buying this guitar. If you like the looks, if you want something modern sounding and something you can down tune because we've got these ferrules and it's gonna give you the extra tension, if you want something that's gonna stick around for many, many years, this is not a guitar that is gonna fail after a few years, try this one. The Ibanez RG5121 BCF Prestige. There is also another finish, a blue finish, which is also quite tasty, but this burgundy finish for me is where it's at. Thanks for watching. You've made it to the end of the video, which puts you in the end of the video club and to prove that you are a member of this prestigious elite, when you leave your comment telling me what you think of the RG5121 uh, VCF, please also include the phrase Ron Burgundy. And that'll let me know that you saw this part. Thanks very much. That just leaves me to say thank you to Ibanez for sending this guitar out for review and for sponsoring the video. They've made it possible. If you want more from me, there are more videos just over there on that side of the screen. If you want more from me at a later date, then click the subscribe button and uh, I'll be here waiting. See ya. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.